Hello and welcome to It's Tea Time. I'm your host, Jonathan Sellers, and we're joined today by the Director of Athletics for Troy University, Jeremy McLean. And uh, Jeremy, this is going to be our final It's Tea Time for the fall semester, and uh, it's been a busy one for sure, but kind of slowing things down before we get to that uh, spring semester where things will pick right back up. But um, again, lots to talk about this week, especially uh, with the football program that they're, they're kind of wrapping things up, played in Atlanta on Friday afternoon and uh, just couldn't get things started the right way and it just uh, a tough loss to Georgia State. Yeah, it was. Um, obviously, uh, went over there with, with high hoops and, and took a good crowd with us. So we, we greatly appreciate our folks uh, showing up strong on a Friday, uh, you know, early afternoon after Thanksgiving. So really appreciate that uh, from a team perspective, you know, just couldn't quite get a rhythm going, um, you know, offensively and, and, and they made some big plays. Uh, they're a much improved program. Right. Um, you know, their their head coach is uh, in year three of his tenure there, and they've gotten better each year. And so that's kind of coming to fruition for them as they've continued to improve. But, um, you know, uh, disappointed we didn't get it done, um, encouraged by some things that we did, but and disappointed by others, I think. But uh, but overall, trying to trying to focus right now on what's next from a football perspective, and, and, uh, and that's, you know, this Saturday, uh, last game of the year. And that's against uh, Louisiana Lafayette, and that's at Lafayette, and always a tough place to play. They've got good fans down there, and uh, but a, a fun place to go is. Uh, there's been many good competitions between Troy and Louisiana Lafayette, and hoping, hopefully, another good one on Saturday. No doubt, uh, great program. Uh, they've had a ton of success over the last five, six, eight years uh, since Coach Hudspeth got there, and really, really uh, uh, got that program headed in the right direction. Um, been down a little bit this year, uh, had some injuries, and so um, you know. From a from a game perspective and matchup perspective, I think uh, uh, you know we match up well in some areas with them, and, and hopefully can finish finish the year on a strong note right. and uh, uh, you know some positive momentum going into the recruiting season. Well, let's kind of talk about your perspective of the season and uh, the year one of, of Coach Neil Brown and and how the program is kind of headed, especially heading into this off season. Yeah, you know I've, I'm really excited. I've said that all year long, and that hasn't changed uh, you know, over the last few games. Um, excited about what I've seen as far as progress is concerned. I think we all would love for that progress to show up on the scoreboard right. quickly. I right. mean, that's a human nature. We want that. We all want that. Our players want it. Our coaches want it. We want it as an administration. I know our fans want it. Um, but kind of behind the scenes, watching what's taking place, um, you know, the culture that's being put into place by our coaching staff. I think our players uh, would tell you that uh, it's been a it's been a positive it's been a, a, a good thing and there's a great foundation there right. to continue to get better and so I'm really encouraged by what we've seen I think um, you know I think uh, we're in a good place as far as our staff's concerned and uh, moving forward into recruiting season and moving into next year uh, you know I think we're going to have some very very positive things to build on and do you ever set expectations uh, for season two or early or do you wait to see how recruiting goes, how the spring goes? I mean, I, I know you've probably got expectations that you want to, uh, to see, but when do you kind of talk to Coach Brown about those kind of things? Yeah, no, I think it's kind of a process. I think, I think you, from a coaching perspective, I think, uh, not to put words in his mouth, but I think, I think our, our staff and most staffs would approach it from the perspective of, of continuing to get better. Right. Um, the scoreboard will take care of itself if you, if you continue to do the right things and continue to improve. Uh, create some depth, you know, uh, recruit, you know, talent, all those things. And so if we, if we do those things and we're teaching the right things, we're going to continue to get better. So, you know, whether there's a number to set or those kind of things, you really don't, fo you don't look at it that way, um, but you look at the, the steps that are necessary to get there, and that's what we'll be focused on. All right, and uh, one other thing that I know that we're seeing progress on, and that's the North End Zone project. Mm -hmm. We're finally starting to see maybe a little bit of dirt moved yeah, over yeah. there, a couple of things <clears throat> happening. If you can kind of update us on that, that process. Yeah, if you drive by there now, you'll see a little bit of a mess um, <laughs> doing some soil, soil samples and some testing on, on, uh, on the soil and, and just so they know what to expect once we get to that point. And so that's fun to see. Um, you know, there won't be long. That road will be closed down and things will start happening. Um, you know, we, we've got a little bit of... Um, paperwork to finish up as far as uh, bid process and those things. So it'll be, you know, the springtime before there's an official groundbreaking, so to speak, okay. but it's happening now. It's moving forward. And, and uh, so that's exciting to see. I think it's going to be, a, I've said all along uh, since the day I got here, it's going to be a game changer for us mm -hmm. from a perspective of not only how we operate daily and what it allows our football team to do, uh, you know, it's going to be about 60,000 square feet of space wow. uh, dedicated to uh, to our football program from an operation standpoint, but also recruiting and the impact it has and how it's going to change the appearance of the stadium and how it sounds and 
uh, I think there's going to be so many positives that come from this project that uh, I'm excited to get it going. Now, do you uh, have a, a time when you expect the uh, blueprints, the, the renderings to be yeah, released? Yeah, hopefully we can do that here shortly. Uh, within, you know, hopefully within a month, uh, month's time, we can put those out, you know, right around the first of the year and the fans let be, people see yeah. that and, you know, people get excited when you actually can kind of see what that finished product is going to look like. And, and uh, we've spent a lot of time focused on the programming and planning and uh, aesthetics piece of that. And, uh, happy with where we've ended up, and, and uh, I think people will be excited when they see it. And uh, still a completion date if everything goes smoothly until uh, the opener of 2017? That's right, yeah. Summer of 2017, we'd, lo we'd love to have our guys in there, and that's what we're shooting for. And so as of today, that's still, that's still a goal and hasn't changed. So, uh, so that, that's the objective, yeah. Okay. And uh, time to talk some basketball. Basketball team's been busy. They haven't had much of a break off. Uh, the men went down to North Texas, played three games. Mm -hmm. They had a tough go. Just the, the ball was not found in the bottom of the net until that last win against North Texas when they finally uh, were able to get some, some things going offensively and got a win there. Yeah, it was, you know, those first two games we didn't win, we were right there in those right. games and had a chance to, to, to really um, uh, make a couple of plays to, to win those. So that's encouraging. But, but to be able to beat the host team on their home floor mm -hmm. was good. Um, and so to get out of there with a W. And, you know, college basketball, winning games on the road is, is a challenge. Right. Um, and so uh, we've had a couple of good wins on the road now with South Florida early in the year and, and, and this game against North Texas. So I think encouraged from what we've seen from the team, young team, and, and uh, a lot of those young guys are really contributing significantly, and that's, that's fun to watch. And, and so it's going to be fun as the year goes on to watch them continue to grow. Yeah, and they're playing well. It's just uh, – and basketball is one of those sports when, when you miss, it's kind of contagious, but when you start making it, those yeah. starts start falling, then and things can go really well. And, and they've got the chance to do that. Uh, two home games coming up. Yep. Tonight, uh, Tuesday night against Southern Miss, and then Saturday afternoon against uh, Austin P. Yeah, two uh, two games this week that you know we really need to defend our home our home court and and um, have a good have a good home stretch here and and uh, play well. But uh, hope hope people come out and support it because like I said, this this team's going to be a lot of fun to watch. They're going to continue to get better and and um, so that that's like you said tonight against Southern Miss and then Saturday at noon against Austin okay. P. And then the women. Uh, play as well tonight, uh, beginning at 5:15 against uh, against Nichols State. So we'll have a doubleheader tonight, and that's always fun. Mm -hmm. And you get uh, you get to see both play at the same time. So. And the, the women's team, they've done well at home, but they've had a little bit of a struggle on the road. They're, they're still leading the country in scoring right now, uh, but the other teams are able to keep pace with them. And I think that'll change as the season goes along defensively. But uh, they're they're playing pretty well. They are. Um, you know, like you said, kind of got outscored there a little bit um, this past game, but. Uh, but a lot of encouraging things too. I think I think uh, coach has been been encouraged by what they, what they've seen. Uh, I think uh, she would probably say there's some teachable moments right. in those losses, and and I think as coaches, that's always uh, how they want to try to approach that. Is how do we keep getting better? And and uh, I know that, that that staff will will get them prepared for conference play, and and uh, hopefully get a chance to to finish strong and and uh, get ready for that for that conference play. And I know we talked about the men being a young team, but the the women are pretty young themselves. That are a lot of newcomers. They've right. had eight uh, newcomers and two freshmen that are getting a lot of playing time. So the young team as well. Yeah, and there. I think uh, it takes time for some of that to mesh sometimes. Right. It doesn't, doesn't happen right away. And so that may be some of what we're seeing. And, and I think they'll be much like on the men's side that um, they'll improve as the year goes along and yeah. will be fun to watch as we saw last, you know, last year if, if anybody came out to watch them or seen them early this year. It's, uh, they get up and down the floor yes. and play at a high speed pace. And, uh, a lot of fun to watch, and, and I think, uh, like I said, they'll keep getting better. Well, and let's talk about uh, something that our student athletes did over Thanksgiving or mm -hmm. before Thanksgiving, but kind of lends to that Thanksgiving feeling of uh, giving back. And the Student Athletic Advisory Committee did a good job of collecting and giving back. That's right, SAC, Student Athletic Advisory Committee uh, on our campus, which is really our leadership group among our student right. athletes. They're really kind of our voice of our student athletes. And so they're an important group uh, on campus and within our department. Uh, they uh, put together a canned food drive, which really ran uh, most of November, uh, and uh, we, we collected in excess of a thousand cans, and uh, were able to to feed um, multiple families, um, you know, over the holidays, right. and, and and moving into the holidays, we'll be able to feed families. So excited about that, you know, it's we talk a lot about what's happening on the court or even in the classroom, but um, I'm excited when we can do things in the community and have an impact on on people outside of this campus. Right, and you know, oftentimes you'll see uh, pictures of our student athletes going to read to local schools and things like that, and, th and it is good to see those things with all the bad things you can see oftentimes in, in the newspapers and on TV. It's good to see them out and doing things in the community, as you said. It is, and, and I think a lot of times we, you know, the, the publicity, uh, the light is shined on some of those issues that happen, right. but um, 
we need and we, we do try to do a, be, a good job, we need to do a better job of, of highlighting some of those positives that um, you know, our student athletes really are active in the community and, and um, you know, and are, are learning right. as they grow as, as individuals um, what that means. Uh, one other thing we need to talk about, and that's kind of a preview, something that's at Trojan Arena, it may not be Troy University athletics related, but it's something y'all are trying to push and get a good attendance there. And that's the Harlem Globetrotters coming to town, and, uh, put on quite the show. If you've never been to a Harlem Glo Globetrotters event, it is fun to watch. Yeah, it really is. And January 12th, uh, they'll be in Trojan Arena. It'll be a lot of fun. I think, uh, like you said, if if you've ever been, you know what it is. If you've never been, you need to come. Yeah. Because uh, it, it's it's great family entertainment. And uh, my, my whole family will be there. We'll be there in attendance. And we've done it before, and it's just a lot of fun. It's, it's, a, it's a great show. And, and uh, to have it here in town and, and uh, you know, easy access, and, and, and uh, we need to make sure we get plenty of people out there. And there's information uh, from a ticket perspective up on our website so people can go check that out. So you can buy them through Troy at University yes. Athletics website. Okay. Absolutely. So check that out at troytrojans.com and uh, make sure you get out there. I think the tickets are, are good pricing right now and uh, not sure if they'll go up, but go ahead and get them early. That's right. Get them early. All right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right. Stay tuned for more coming up on It's Tea Time. Welcome back to It's Tea Time, and we're going to talk women's basketball with the head coach of that program. And that's Coach Shanda Rigby. And Hi. Coach, y'all uh, been a little busy over the Thanksgiving break. Y'all played a couple of games. Got a, a big win over Fort Payne, or mm -hmm. Fort, Fort Valley, Valley excuse mm -hmm. me, Fort Valley State mm -hmm. uh, here at home. And then went on the road, played a, a tough one against Belmont, a very good team uh, coming out on the losing end of a high-scoring matchup. So your team is doing what you want to do offensively, but talk about uh, defensively what y'all are trying to do right now. Well, um, you know, I would say that this season has had a, a painful start to what we expect to be a special season. We've lost two games. That's two more than we wanted to lose at this point. However, it has been meaningful losses. We have learned so much. Um, we are leading the entire nation in scoring right now. We're number one in the nation in scoring, but that's not good enough until we can hold other teams to below us. Um, we're really making strides. Uh, our team is responding well to what we're putting out there, the deficits we see in those games. Um, we've been exposed on our defense, so we, the team is responding well and we're getting much better. Now you've got kind of a young team, relative. You've got a couple of freshmen, but a lot of newcomers. So yes. is it still taking some time to gel, to work some things out? It is. We have eight newcomers. Right. And we're also playing a style of basketball this year that's hard to bring a team together, period, much less eight in, um, on the front end, because we're substituting five at a time every two and a half minutes. There's not one person on, on our team that doesn't expect to play every game. Right. So, uh, you know, truly, we're not, we're not just focusing on the top eight. All of our players are going to be involved in our winning. And, I mean, it, what have you seen out of those newcomers? Have they stepped up so far? Oh, my goodness, so much. Our two true freshmen, who are both from right down the road, one from Brant Brantley and one from Dale County, right. um, they uh, – Daleville – um, they have ended up being two of our top scorers and top rebounders. So that's a good feeling when your true freshmen are, are performing like that. And it's just like every week and every game we have a new one step up. Amanda Mendoza, who's a newcomer for us, right. she shot 100% in the first half of our game the other night and ended up doing a great job. Yeah. Um, so we're proud of her. And I know watching her at one of the home games, she's fast out there watching her run the floor really quick and good defensively as well. Very much. And just really smart, intelligent. And uh, y'all have got a couple of games coming up. you got Nichols State at home tonight on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about that matchup for us. Nichols State, we're playing a very well-coached team. I've known Doobie Plaisance, their head coach, for a very long time. Uh, she, she has an exciting style of basketball. Um, I would expect this to be a great women's basketball game tonight to watch. Uh, she has a very talented team this year. They met, we match up well against them. They'll probably start um, – a smaller lineup than us, probably four guards and one post. We're going with a little bit bigger lineup. Um, so we'll see how that works out. But both teams will be running and trying to score quickly. Uh, they've had some success lately. They're coming off of a win. So we're looking forward to today's game. Now, do you see teams going a little smaller against y'all oftentimes because you're trying to push the pace a little bit? Maybe, maybe. And that's something we're kind of toying with because some of our better scores and we have some powerful rebounders in the bigger positions this year. You know, we started out here very guard heavy, but this year we've, we've added some, some height and some, um, some size to our components. So we're seeing how that goes. Um, we want to keep those big players in there and keep them rebounding, keep them active. And we feel like that'll pay off in the long run. And you get a little bit of time off before you go uh, to Vanderbilt. You're going to go back up to Nashville and play an SEC team. Talk about that matchup. Uh, well, last night I was able to watch Vanderbilt. Uh, they were on the SEC channel. So I just <laughs> flipped it on and watched them a little bit. And uh, not to get, get my mind off of Nickel State, right. but that's first priority. But I did see them. And that's going to be a challenge for us. Um, we're going to have to grow up 
a lot more in this next week to be able to go over there and win that. But, I mean, we're going to put a plan in place. I'm sure the team's going to buy into it, and we're going to go give it our all. All right, Coach. Well, I know you got a game coming up soon, so good luck. Thank and you. Uh, we'll let you get out of here. Thank, Thank you, you very much. All right, stay tuned for more coming up on It's Tea Time. And welcome back to It's Tea Time for our final segment as we're going to look at the men's basketball team with one of the assistant coaches, and that's Coach Chase Richardson. And, and Coach, you're new to Troy this year, so welcome to Troy. And, Thank you. Um, if you can kind of introduce the fans to yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, uh, this is my first assistant coaching position I've been coaching. Uh, this is my fifth year uh, in terms of being in the business or industry, whatever you want to call right. it, college basketball. But this is my fifth year, first as an assistant. I was previously at Western Kentucky University as director of basketball operations. Um, graduated from there as well. Okay. So this is the outside of coaching year of high school. This is the only other place I've seen besides Western Kentucky, and it's been great. <laughs> Uh, since day one here. It's been very fortunate and extremely happy to be here. So you, uh, you may be new to Troy as a coach, but you're familiar with Troy from uh, being at Western Kentucky. Those teams have played several times and yes. several great matchups. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, I don't think we ever won a game in Sartain Hall. <laughs> um, I was four years as a student and, and four as a coach. It was probably seven trips. Mm -hmm. We never won in Sartain, <laughs> I think maybe one time. So yeah, it was uh, never a Never a trip we look right. forward to, but you know it's a little different being on this right. side now. So yeah, it's uh, very familiar with Troy in that in that aspect. And I know we're trying to make uh, Trojan Arena the same kind of environment where it's a, a tough place to win. And uh, y'all got a game tonight. We'll get to that in just a minute. But uh, some games y'all played over the break and before the break and at North Texas in, in a tournament up there. The first two came out on the losing in, in close games, and it was, seemed that just shots didn't seem to fall kind of when you needed them to. Just Talk about those losses. Yeah, you know, going into the season as a coaching staff, we thought the strength of our team would be our ability to make shots. You know, uh, at any time on the court, we're going to have four guys that we consider three to four guys that can make, you know, three point shots right. and stretch the defense. But, you know, really we haven't shot the, well, uh, shot the ball well any game, particularly except in our last game at North Texas. So, first two games out in North Texas, we, didn't, we weren't very good offensively uh, in terms of shooting percentage and, and, and making open looks. But uh, game one against Sanford, you know, all that being said, we were in the driver's seat late in the game. Uh, you know, didn't didn't necessarily execute um, against a press uh, a couple instances late in the game, and didn't make free throws like we should. And you know, I'm not t not taking anything away from Sanford. That's one we're going to look at the rest of the year and probably say, hey, we should have should have had that one. But right. you know, that happens throughout the season. You just don't want it to happen too many times. And then uh, game two against Idaho, same same story. They they played zone and kind of packed it in and was wanting us to shoot because they on, on paper we hadn't shot it well. Right. We didn't shoot it well that game. Uh, you know, I think outside of the last couple of minutes of the game, we were two for 23 from three-point line at one point. And it's going to be tough to be anybody when you're doing that. So, uh, But fortunately, we, we rebounded against North Texas the last game, right. shot the ball well like we, we think we can and will. Uh, and, you know, the outcome w w was showing the results. So. Right, and you got that big win against North Texas. Wesley Person shot well, and some of your other players did as well. And, and you think maybe that was a little bit of a confidence builder. They finally got some shots to go down, and that hopefully will carry over. Yeah, you know, in a tournament setting like that, it's totally different dynamic in terms of you're not going to practice, you're not going back to watch film to adjust for the good and bad. Uh, you know, it's quick turnaround right back at it. So you have to be really tough and show some character when things don't go your way. And we were really proud of our guys, how they responded. You know, those first two games we didn't play well offensively. And, you know, the big emphasis was, you know, next game, don't, don't dwell. We'll, we'll look, go back and look at it later. And they really responded that last game. And it wasn't obviously wasn't anything we practiced or, or did, you know, because we're in the hotel watching film. Right. That's about all you do in a tournament like that. So they showed uh, quite a bit of grit and character as far as coming out. And same guys, they were just making shots the next night, same looks, and uh, it worked out. And right now uh, you're at the 3-3 three and three mark. You yes, got a sir. chance to get back over the 500 mark with two home games. Uh, first against Southern Miss, and that's tonight at, at uh, 730. Talk about that matchup for us. Uh, yeah, another good quality opponent. This will be our third Conference USA opponent we play uh, this early part of the season. And, then, uh, you know, that's a good good comparable opponent. The games we want to schedule and games are the Sunbelt Conference wants to, us to be playing. Right. And, you know, because Conference USA, Sunbelt, you know, it's kind of a – uh, a chess match right. in terms of that. So it's a good opportunity for us in that regard and geographically. It's nearby and probably a series we'll look to continue to play year in, year out. I wasn't here last year, but uh, watching the film and, and the tone of the team and the coaching staff was that game last year was like our Stanford game is one they gave away and they should have won, they felt like. So that's been pretty motivating for the guys this week and building up for uh, practicing and preparing the game. And 
Uh, anytime you get to be back at home after being on the road and play some games, you know, we want to win home games. So if we can take care of business this week, it'd be a, a big stretch for us in our season. What do you know about the matchup? What kind of team is Southern Miss? Southern Miss, they, uh, you know, they only have, I think, two guys returning from last okay. year's team. So they got a lot of uh, new pieces, new parts. Uh, they have their point guard. Is a, a, he was at Dayton two years ago when Dayton went to Elite Eight. was a starting point guard on Elite Eight okay. team. So he, he's, he's going to be a load for us to handle. And they got some guys that can make shots, and they try to, you know, their thing is they, they, they recruit shooters. So um, I think they probably went through some of the stuff we have where they've been making shots and right. haven't played as well as they thought. But they definitely are a talented team. And, uh, you know, if we're not on top of our game tonight, it'll, it'll be a tough one. Now I'm going to make you look a little bit ahead. I know you're concentrating on this one, but mm -hmm. a little bit ahead to Saturday. Uh, noon game against uh, Austin P. What do you know about them? Uh, same type of thing. They're an uh, Ohio Valley Conference mm -hmm. team. Um, had a big win against Sanford on uh, Saturday night, a team that beat us okay. last week. They played Sanford Saturday and beat them. So that right there is enough to you know, have our attention in right. terms of going into the game because they beat a team we weren't able to beat. Uh, have an all-conference, uh, probably the best big, big guy in their league, a uh, guy last name Horton. Mm -hmm. uh, he's back as a senior this year, and he, he'll, he's a, one of the leading shot blockers in the country. So he'll, he'll be a big test for our bigs and interior guys. And they got some other guys in the perimeter that can score and make shots. So, you know, a, after this Southern Miss game, we, we'll have an off day tomorrow and Thursday and Friday. It'll be a total buildup for them. I'm not so sure on my end. Uh, you know, I know Horton and a couple of their guards, but, you know, we'll, we'll shift gears on, on Thursday for them. But it's another type of game as Southern Miss last year. Uh, the team here lost last year, and they thought they should have won. Uh, so it'll be a similar type of buildup and, and buzz around the team and, and for that game on Saturday. And, and one you really need a, a bunch of fans at, especially tonight. And then, again, on Saturday at, the, at noon. Yeah, uh, noon tip-off. You can uh, football games on Saturday afternoon. You won't miss them. I mean, you can get, get in there and watch the Trojans play and be out by 2, 2.30 to watch the football games the rest of the day. Exactly so right. So out there. A full day of athletics and started off with some Trojan basketball. There you go. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. Join us again next semester. This is our final. Uh, it's tea time for this semester, but we'll start back again in January. So enjoy it.